Hello everyone and welcome to the Unboxing Tomorrow blog. This is a fairly new topic that I'm covering for part of my Software Defined Radio series, or SDR, and it involves band stop filters that are pretty useful in a lot of different applications. The first question you might have is, what is a band stop filter? Essentially, uh, this is a type of filter that goes by a lot of different names. Some people call it a notch filter, some people call it a reject filter. Regardless of the name, the idea is that you're blocking out a range of frequencies that you're not particularly interested in listening to. This might not sound too important until you attempt to receive some radio signals that are very weak. Say for example, here in the United States you can listen to the air band. Now before I go any further, I do need to note that you need to check the laws in your location regarding radio licenses, whether you need a license to even receive these signals. In some countries, it may be entirely illegal to receive the airband. In other countries, it might be legal to receive these signals unless you are republishing that information. So this particular model is based on a 7th order Chebyshev filter. And while it's very useful and very interesting to use, one of the problems that you're going to have is that you don't really control how far away the aircraft is very easily you can have that signal overwhelmed by something in your vicinity like a um, like a commercial radio tower or a television tower and these installations transmit at very high power levels that can essentially overwhelm your receiver even if it's pretty well designed so in the example I've got here I'm using a uh, Realtek SDR which is a RTL SDR chipset in trying to receive the airband, you can kind of see that there's some interference from some FM broadcast stations. This one in particular kind of becomes like a recurring problem sometimes, unless I use a band stop filter. This is the exact same band with the band stop filter installed, and as you can see, there's basically no trace at all of that strong uh, offending tower. I'm sure you could probably reconstruct it if you looked hard enough for it, but for all practical purposes, that signal is gone. What remains is the airband itself. This hasn't really affected the ability to work inside the airband. So what exactly causes this? There's basically an overloading effect when you have these really strong transmitters. And to counteract this, traditionally radio receivers would use uh, what's called a pre-selection filter. And this pre-selection filter would basically do the job of the reject filter, but it would also be tunable in a lot of cases. The reason the SDR doesn't have its own reject filter or its own pre-select filter is because it covers such a wide range of frequencies, it would really be impractical and you know one of the major appeals of the RTL SDR chipset is that it's very low cost. Here in the United States, you can usually get it for less than $35. I've seen them go for as low as about $10 or $15, and they work perfectly fine. But once you have to, once you're forced to install a really elaborate filter bank, you really lose that, um, that low cost to it. So this exact reject filter here is specifically engineered for rejecting the FM broadcast band here in North America. I have a couple of other filters that are designed for the AM band. Uh, there's also even a uh, band pass filter which only lets in a certain narrow of frequencies. This is something that I've used in the fairly recent article I did on ADS-B uh, telemetry from aircraft. And the idea is basically the same. You want to block out the entire part of the radio spectrum that you don't necessarily want to use, which is going to be a very large portion of it. So that's it for now. I'll probably cover this again as I sort of start using other parts of the radio band in general. But for now you can know that these band stop filters are very inexpensive, highly effective. I definitely recommend using them and in fact I plan on purchasing probably one for every SDR that I have currently. If you'd like more detail, be sure to drop by our website at unboxingtomorrow.com. And while you're there, also consider contributing to the Patreon page. 
We also do a monthly poll and a best practices session where after every major build, I'll just go back, kind of rewind, and go into a lot of detail that might not justify an entirely new article. So it's something to consider if you're really enthusiastic about STEM, robotics, embedded systems, signal processing in general. Just be sure to give us a like and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.